Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Taking Jeff Goldblum to Life Aquatic. Willem Dafoe to Aquaman. Nicole Kidman to Dead Calm. Sam Neill, Hunt for Red October. James Earl Jones to the Swashbuckler. Finally, Robert Shaw, Jaws. Just when you thought it was safe to say that you thought it was safe to go back in the water, Tom, Josh, Dan, dive into six films anchored by six different actors, swimming us all the way to the summer blockbuster that burned summer blockbusters Jaws. six films six actors six weeks three guys one podcast the fire pivot it's going to be a jaws dropping summer trip alone on a sea of endless calm it was easy to imagine they were the only two people on earth but into their perfect world, there came a stranger. Trying to take her across the Pacific on your own? No, there were six of us. Yeah, this died 10 days ago. I'm going on board her. He's fast asleep, he won't even know. What about those people, huh? There wasn't any food poisoning, was there? You think I'm making this up? No, I don't. You sound so much like them, Ray! It's scary! From the makers of The Road Warrior and Mad Max. Dead Calm. A voyage into fear. Alright, so dude, where's Dan? Uh, he was just online. Oh, uh, shit. Wait, hang on. Uh, I'm right here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Yeah, there, there he is. Jesus, God. Dude, are, are you stoned? What? what? No! No, dude, you're totally high right now. I am not high. I've never really? been high. I don't do that stuff. Dude, I can see you right now on Skype. Your nose is white. Uh, I just had some of those Hostess donuts, those little ones. What, have you been burying your head in there? Jesus, God, you're like, ah, uh, and why, and why, uh, why are your eyes so red? So tonight we're watching Dead Calm. Uh, good Stop. morning. Answer Bob. the damn question. Oh, I was outside earlier. I had the bug spray backwards. Um, <laughs> backwards, yeah, sure. And, and what about those uh, track marks on your arm there? Hmm? You mosquito know, bites, Tom. That's why I had to use the bug spray. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, sure, that's mosquito okay. bite. Yeah, yeah, that explains. Uh, yeah, okay. it's looking like a constellation map to Sweden. Yeah, that's what it is. You know what? You know what? This the audacity of you two you know i have never never not once not ever demonstrated a lack of control in anything here i am being completely honest and i get nothing but disrespect i think you two owe me apology you're right uh, you're so dude i'm sorry yeah I'm sorry, sorry. It, it was a bad joke now if we can get this started <clears throat> what was that no, I've I've had a few beers and uh, I'm quite drunk. Fire pit for soap before a live studio audience. Hello, bots and listeners, and welcome back to the fire pit. I'm Dan, British name Nigel, and we are getting sauced on our way to Jaws. That's that's right. The sinker swim summer tour is heading right into open waters tonight first time since pathfinder actually that the three of us all three of us are going into a movie blind that's right folks neither of us have seen this film will it be another pathfinder hmm? let's find out uh as per the rules we have taken an actor or an actress from our last film and moved on down the line to this film and to tell us what we're watching tonight and who we're watching tonight i'll turn it over to tom well thank you nigel thank you very much i'm glad you could be sauced with us today I'm, of course, Tom, British name Thompson, 
And tonight, we're taking the former Mrs. Tom Cruise, Nicole Kidman, and watching her cruise on from being Aquaman's mom to Alan Grant's wife in Dead Call. See what I did there, guys? Because Tom Cruise is You got it, Tom. You don't have to explain every joke. Our audience is smart. Yes, they are robots. And Peggy. (laughs) And Peggy. Hey, Peggy. Peggy. Peggy Friend in the, the bottom. Channel. Friend of the channel, Peggy. Last week we saw her, not Peggy, but <laughs> Nicole Kidman in the aforementioned Aquaman following Willem Dafoe from The Life Aquatic. Aquaman was a mindless action-adventure comic book film, and this week we're slowing things down in dead calm. A thriller about a couple spending some time at sea after a tragedy and taking on a passenger. And I'm sure hilarity ensues. So give us a rundown of the film. I turn over to Josh. Josh, rundown. Give. Boom. Thank you. Thank you, Thompson. Thank you very much. I'm Reginald, American name Josh. And tonight we are watching Dead Calm, a movie based on the 1963 novel of the same name. I did not know this movie was based on a book. (laughs) Neither did I. (laughs) But uh, apparently Orson Welles tried to adapt it in 1966 to 1969, but it never got made. Yes, yeah. Aren't there like copies of it? Like what he tried to make? Apparently like the original negatives were lost, but they're out there somewhere. So I don't know. Anywho, this movie was released April 7th, 1989, directed by Philip Noyce, who, a bit of trivia, went on to direct two sequels to next week's movie. Screenplay by Terry Hayes. The budget of this film was about $10 million, and its box office run made about 7.8. Rotten Tomatoes, it was uh, 83%, and IMDb had a 7.0 out of 10. So that would uh, mark three weeks in a row we've had 7 out of 10 movies. No kidding. Yeah, Yeah, Life Aquatic was a 7 out of 10, and Aquaman was also a 7 out of 10. So, yeah. So we could almost call this the uh, six weeks of seven. I don't know. I haven't. I, I imagine next week's movie is not a seven out of ten. <laughs> but as I said, it premiered April seventh. It opened in the sixth slot that weekend with an opening of two point four million. To be fair, though, to be fair, it opened. It was released the same weekend as Major League, which opened to over eight million dollars. And it also released the same weekend as the never forgotten eternal classic film starring Jean Claude Van Damme, Cyborg which opened to $3 million. It lost to Cyborg, although I've never seen Cyborg, so I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it lost to Cyborg. Wow. And the Fletch sequel and another comedy movie starring Michael Keaton and Christopher Lloyd, but I don't remember that name, and I don't think anybody remembers that movie. Hell, I just remembered right now that there was a sequel to Fletch. Yeah, yeah. Interestingly enough, this is our first horror-slash-thriller film, unless you count Doom from episode three, uh, which I think none of us do, except no. for Tom, of course, which, Dan, correct me if I'm wrong. He said that that was his favorite movie we've seen so so far, right? Yes, oh. it is. It's actually Wait. his favorite film that he's seen so far. In fact, it might be his favorite of Wait. all time. I, I, now, right. Tom, Wait. Tom, Wait. Tom, Wait. Tom, 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 yep. correct me if I'm right. This is true, is it not? I'm, I, I, mm, I'm this, gonna have... Okay, anywho, this movie <laughs> contains a lot of... <laughs> Of then soon to be '90s actors, uh, soon to be hit '90s actors. I'm sorry, um, like our connection from Aquaman, a pre Days of Thunder Nicole Kidman, a pre Jurassic Park Sam Neill, and a pre Titanic Billy Zane. This movie is literally only a few years from their breakout roles, but let's be honest, we only remember Billy Zane from the movie The Phantom. I hope okay. we get to that movie someday. So I, haven't do I. Seen, I haven't seen The Phantom in a while, but I remember liking it. Yeah, I've never seen it, I'm, but I'm just morbidly curious about it because oh, I actually terrible. had it. It's terrible, but I loved it as a kid because I remember the, there was a cartoon that came out a few years earlier. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it was canceled by the time the, that movie came out, but it was like The Phantom 2099 or something. So it was a yeah. Future. Whereas this movie came out, and this was a Phantom in like the 1920s. Well, that's when the... I guess he was a comic strip character too. I had toys of the Phantom. So yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll see that at some point, but uh, tell us a little bit more about this film, Josh. I went on, on a nostalgia tangent. Oh, that's fine. That's all I have for the rundown. And thank you for opening my, my segue into the next segment. So dead calm. We're watching it. 
Dead calm. Yeah. Wow. Uh, again, going in blind. Uh, neither one of us has seen this film. So mm-hmm. curious to see what uh, the three of us think about that. And I'm really hoping it's not another Pathfinder. Although okay. to to Dead Calm's credit, before we've even seen the film, we'll give it a little bit of a credit here. Pathfinder was not a 7 out of 10 or an 83% on Rotten Tomatoes. Like Everyone going in, all the reviews I read was Pathfinder was terrible. And we were going to regret watching it. And spoiler alert, if you haven't listened to that episode yet, it was terrible, and we regret watching it. Yes. So. If you want to listen to a comparison and a contrast to Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, and Civil War, listen to our Pathfinder episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we spent most of, yeah, we spent most of the movie debating, or, or uh, not debating, uh, comparing the Marvel movie universe and the dc movie universe and why one is successful and one has yet to find its footing and we did not spend hardly any time talking about pathfinder other than we did agree that the cinematography looked good Uh, there was something there and if one positive did come from that movie it was clancy brown yeah we we did get to uh starship Starship troopers Troopers. and it was during starship troopers that we decided on top gun as the next movie and then it was during top gun that we decided on the road to Independence Day. So if anything, Pathfinder did help us find the path. Don't, don't do it. No, 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 no. We've all, Josh made that joke last time. No more. Next person that makes that joke gets booted from the podcast. So I know none of us have seen it. So there's no like expectations, I'd like to say, other than we hope it's not Pathfinder. But I went to imdb and just decided to look at some of their top their five star reviews and their one star reviews just to see what um some of the people have been saying there so if you don't mind i'd like to read off at least two from each category do, here do this or do this uh, this way then read us the review and we have to guess the star rating oh well i think <laughs> okay okay i'll I'll start it off easy. Um, okay, so this one came from Leof, Lufwine Draka 8. Um, despite its age, I still see Dead Calm as a pretty definitive seafaring thriller. To be more precise, it's a psychological thriller, one of many that were all their age back in the 80s and early 90s, Fatal Attraction, so on and so forth. For me, the two pinnacles of the genre are this film and Hands That Rocks a Cradle. Although not a big fan of Kidman, I believe this genre to be one of her best performances, and it's hard to fault. Two out of stars. Yeah, that's two definitely, stars. that sounds like a one-star review. Yeah, that's a two-star. Yeah, that's a five. Star. That's a five-star, actually. Oh, damn. Fuck damn. of shocks. Right. Wow, I am totally. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what to believe anymore. All right. Well, I'll give you another one here. The this one might alive. be. Yeah, this one might be a little trickier to figure out. This one comes, Vite Cavicius thirty one. This was a bad idea, by the way, Dan. This is like, yeah, bad idea. Yeah. Stop. yeah. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll eat the bullet on this one. Go ahead, Tom. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this um, review, um, um, this one again might be trickier to figure out. Quote. This is one of those movies where characters are asking to be killed. <laughs> that's a five star review. That's the kind of put that's the kind of reviews I leave for my favorite movies. Josh, your vote. Uh, is it one or five star? Or, or is one there... or five star. I was not expecting a guesswork, otherwise okay, I would have yeah. thrown in a few two or fours, but Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Well, for next time if we do this segment. I'm gonna go with a one star. Well, Josh, uh Josh takes the square right there. Oh, point to me. Yeah. Okay. And I'll. Okay. And this next one, again, another trickier one from Roe Davidson 12. Finding this turd thrilling is equal to believing <laughs> Adam Sandler movies are actually funny. It oh, always sorry. puzzles me. <laughs> Wait, let me finish. It I'm always sorry. puzzles me when I see words like excellent thriller and fantastic used in reviews of this kind of formulated device. It's like their frame of reference is the Three Stooges meet Godzilla. Now that's a thriller. Five star. Yeah, I'm going yeah, with five, five star. star. Five star yeah. review. I, I I was surprised. I was surprised it wasn't. It's a one star review either, guys. Oh, oh damn. guys. I so, did not see that coming. And, and the, so I think uh, 
So that's kind of uh, what the internet's telling us we can get into. I think, I mean, if going back to last week in terms of what we can expect, as you said, Josh, this is some early Kidman, early Zane, early Sam Neal. We've seen their careers over the years. They've, they're quality actors and actresses. A Kidman, she... Uh, I don't think she's ever really phoned in a performance that I've ever seen her in. She was the one of the best parts of Eyes Wide Shut, um, which was a lousy ass film. Um, there was a couple other things she's been in. Billy Zane, come on, he's just fantastic. So, putting the three together, they're hungry. They want to prove themselves. This film might not have uh, caught audiences' attention, but I'm thinking we're at least. Uh, be entertained it's yeah. not gonna suck i think well do you have any thoughts josh like any expectations or what you kind of want to get out of this or i'm honestly expecting something like i recently rewatched double jeopardy i like that movie i really like that movie it's nothing that i'm gonna like go out of my way to watch but if it's like not as good as that but it's still good i will be satisfied like i'm not going into this movie with high expectations but i will note that um like when I was doing my research for this film, it was only in the box office for three weeks. That's wow. Yeah, so it's like they even the studio was like, "Yeah, this we're not gonna push this any farther." And I had, didn't I, I tried to do some, you know, how some movies get like a cult following. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like obviously, some of the more zany movies will typically get a cult fo following, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, nothing for this one I could find. It's just like it's just a movie that existed in the '80s that people acknowledge they might or might not have heard of. One of those like um man uh, Mandela effects like what was that movie like Deep Calm Deep Blue Ocean that sort of thing. It was that or... movie with the one guy and uh, the she, shit she was in that movie with Tom Cruise. Um 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 Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, that's the one. But yeah, so I'm not really expecting much out of this one. Um, it just yeah, not really at all. But I am anxious to see uh watch a horror thriller with you guys because it is definitely a deviation of our norm mm -hmm. and I, I think that's really the whole sink or swim summer tour is a we're literally throwing stuff on the wall and seeing if it sinks or swim that's a terrible analogy <laughs> terrible yeah, i need to redo that <laughs> swim uh, my boy thud swim yeah <laughs> so just a Quick recap. This is one of the things I'm looking forward to. This movie was made in 1989 or released at least in 1989. For those at home uh, and might not be aware, 1989 was a goddamn good year for movies. Mm -hmm. um, not yet. 1989 was a damn good year for movies. Um, there was a lot Cyborg. of hit. Yeah, well, well, Cyborg is a classic. There's no there's no denying that. So I'm kind of looking forward to that because, I mean, there's a lot of movies released in this time that were really good. Um, even the non-hits were pretty good back then. I don't know what it is. It was just that was just one of those years. It was just a great year for movies. Um, another thing I'm looking forward to in this movie is um, the three leads in the actor, uh, Nicole Kidman, Sam Neill, and Billy Zane. Like Tom said, we've seen their careers, and they've had a pretty good careers in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And all of them have turned into pretty good performances in big movies. And this movie was, like Josh mentioned, right on the cusp of their big breakout roles. Although Billy Zane's a little later with Titanic's in 1996. He was in Back to the Future. He's in, yeah, he's, yeah, he was. So, yeah. yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. But so I always like to go back. I, I like to see movies sometimes where that stars a big name actor right before they hit it really big. Because I like to see their performances right before they got huge. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing it. Especially Kidman. Kidman's probably the biggest name in this film that went on to have a huge career. Although Sam Neill, Jurassic Park, Event Horizon. So, I mean, and then of course, Billy Zane's in Titanic, which was one of the highest grossing movies of all time. And plus to add to that, Nigel, the director too is not a slouch. Uh, I think he did what? Clear and Present Danger? <laughs> um, at least another couple. And Patriot, other Patriot, ones. Patriot Games as well. Yeah. So again, we've got a pretty good lineup. Yeah. And Josh, you were just mentioning, I just wanted to quick, you mentioned that this movie was only in theaters for what, four weeks, three weeks? Three or four weeks, something like that, yeah. Yeah, well, that was in April. And starting in May, 
1989. Like, here's the rundown of the summer releases. There's no wonder why they yanked this movie. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, Batman, Back to the Future 2, Look Who's Talking, Dead Poet Society, Lethal Weapon 2, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Ghostbusters 2, Disney releases The Little Mermaid, Born on the Fourth of July, Good Rain Man. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that Rain Man was actually <laughs> number two that weekend that it came out. Like, and it wasn't that wasn't its first weekend either. Like, Holy I just, Christ. I just I just read off a list of movies that I read off a list of eleven movies that you would probably say seven of them are probably some of the best ever. Yeah. If it had been released a year earlier or later, <laughs> maybe it would have stood a chance. Yeah. Holy yeah, that, shit. Born on the fourth of July and Rain Man both starred Tom Cruise, didn't they? Yes, they did. Oh, wow. That was a good year for him. And, you know, I was even thinking, uh, like, we're seeing these these, uh, actors and actresses in their early roles. Like, remember when we were comparing uh, Tom Cruise in Top Gun to his later roles when we were watching that one? It's like you could see some of the dramatic actor that he became later on from Top Gun. Like, when he did the drama scene with after Goose died and, spoiler alert, (laughs) <laughs> you you could see that it's like i'm curious like if we're gonna see anything like oh my god they could do so much better we've seen them do better you know? but could they do worse too oh we know they can do worse we know <laughs> they can do worse we did see aquaman yeah i've seen tom cruise in vanilla sky i know he can do worse oh also um uh This movie's out for three weeks. I see why they yanked it. Three weeks after this movie comes out, a little-known Kevin Costner film called Field of Dreams is released. So nobody's heard of that one. Yeah, no one's heard of Field of Dreams. It's kind of an indie film. It's 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 kind of it's it's one of Costner's like less subdued kind of movies. It's like one of those films that like when you see it, like oh that's Kevin Costner. I didn't know he was in this. Not quotable at all. Not, no. not at all. Not at all. No. Absolutely not a tearjerker of a movie. Wow. But all in all, I'm, I'm anxious to watch this movie. Remember what I was telling you guys the, about how my parents would watch the movies? Mm. And I would never, ever choose those movies on my own. But this feels like a movie that my parents would bring home. And they would put on, and I would sit down because I was bored and start watching it with them. Mm-hmm. and just watch the movie with them. But I would never watch it on my own. So I, literally, this feels like a moment I'm sitting down with my parents watching a movie that they would uh, pick that I never would. So hi, Mom and Dad, if you are listening. You are responsible for our only view from Oklahoma. So thank you for that. <laughs> yes, thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Josh's parents. <laughs> well, uh, shall we uh, start the flick? All Let's right. do it. Yep. Tom, cue the music, please. Do, 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 Actually, do, no, 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 Tom. I want you to say it this week. Oh, okay. Me. No, you. Um, speak in the third person, damn it. <laughs> this is ridiculous, but Tom, cue the music. Tom, you're an idiot. Welcome back to another exciting episode of The Fire Pit. I am your interspersal host, editor, and dog trainer, Tom. And trust me, when I get done trading this pooch, it'll be the most attentive guard dog you'll ever know. Thank you for sailing along with us on our sink or swim summer tour. This has been a splash for us over here, and we hope it has been for you out there as well. Uh, Some small updates. We are going to be adjusting our release schedule just a little bit. Normally, we try to have these out on Sundays, but as we brought in the bad with add, subtract, this, that, and the other, we will be switching the release schedules to Mondays going forward. You know, giving you something to listen to on your morning commute from your bedroom to, you know, however far your work may be. So look to your links on Mondays and hopefully you'll have something exciting for you waiting there. Uh, No commercial breaks this time. Uh, We did try to get something together, but it didn't quite have enough to work with. Yeah, maybe next week. Uh, But if you have any commercials, legitimate or otherwise, or ads for us, or just any thoughts or ideas, uh, you can email us at curtain call entertainment inc at gmail.com it's curtain call entertainment inc at gmail.com put in the subject line what you're responding about whether it's responses recommendations retorts i will read and promptly not respond 
Again, that's Curtain Call Entertainment Inc. at gmail.com. Capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I at gmail.com. Yep, and that's the captain giving us a signal. Time to weigh anchor and head towards that horizon. And we want to reach the shores before the storms hit, after all. Thank you for listening, and as always, good luck. <laughs> Do you think that, uh, especially for movies that aren't that popular like tonight, that it, maybe we give kind of a synopsis before we do our uh, closing statements? Like, we just watched this movie. People listening to this podcast probably haven't. If we can give a rundown of the film, they'll be able to appreciate our final thoughts a little bit better. Yeah, a spoiler section, if you will. Yeah, effectively, yeah. Like, put that in after our initial thoughts, but before our final thoughts. You know, Shoot. I don't... I don't think that's a bad idea. Do a little bit of that, and I like that idea too, Josh. The big points, if you will. Basically, the movie starts off with Sam Neill coming off of a train, and then he's going to the train station to meet his wife, and instead he finds a couple of uh, police officers. Come to find out, the wife got into a car accident, and their son died. So I guess they go on a boat. As and, one does. Yeah, you know, I guess, you know, to get away from it all, I don't know. And then they see another boat that was apparently abandoned. They run into a crazy dude who basically finds a way to abandon Sam Neill's character on a uh, on his old boat. And then he effectively, you know, turns the dog against the family. I don't know why. But then uh, then basically rapes the wife. The wife comes back and... Am I missing any big scenes between here and then? Sam Neill's struggling to get the boat back as it's slowly sinking. Okay, half hour bilge pumping. Yeah, he literally sits there and pumps the bilge. Gotta, gotta empty it out, gotta empty it out. But uh, then, like, combat ensues. There's a shotgun where she tries to sneak it, but the dog tries to turn her in. But thankfully, he couldn't talk. Shoots the dog with a harpoon. Shoots the bad guy with the harpoon twice. Casts the bad guy off, saves the husband. And then, when everything is done and happy in the end, he's washing her hair, he goes to get food, and then somebody starts washing her hair but it's the bad guy. So he ends up eating a flare and dying, and that's the end of the movie. I don't know why I did the whole thing. That was just an example. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, that's an idea, yeah. Although I would have changed it and said that um, he dined on a tuna flare sandwich at the end of the movie. Boo! <laughs> Feel free to use that as needed and edit things in as you need to there, Tom. <laughs> I, that's not making the cut. Oh, come <laughs> on! <laughs> that was gold. That pun just burned me. <laughs> yeah, I like that plan. I'm on. Yeah, I'm on board with it. I kind of, I kind of like that idea. All right. Oh. So that was dead calm, and I think we're going to start <laughs> off final thoughts with uh, Josh tonight. Yeah. So dead calm. Um. Well, first, uh, first <laughs> thing about this movie, I'd have to say, is it so far. Out of all the movies I've watched, which, you know, is substantial, but probably not the most seen by any one person. Mm -hmm. um, this is the first movie I've ever seen that made me happy when the dog died. Seriously? That damn dog! <laughs> yeah. Fuck that dog. When he died, I was like, good! <laughs> With a goddamn traitor, half of the problems could have been solved if it just would leave things alone! Fucking dog. Little... Fucking okay. dog. We're bitter. But anywho... I would have, like, <laughs> it was a, uh, again, I got to put this into the thing where um, I use this uh, analogy where when I was rewatching Star Trek The Next Generation, like, especially like, seasons one and two, it's like, I'm watching them do all this stuff, and I'm like, oh my god, could you be any more cliche? But then I have to remember that this came out in the 80s. The cliches hadn't been established. What they were doing established a lot of these cliches, especially for sci-fi in the 80s leading into the 90s. And I'm like watching this, and a lot of the stuff is cliche. Random guy coming onto the boat. Dude's fucking space crazy type shit. Separating the husband and the wife and being stuck in a locked room while the boat's sinking. You know I mean? It's like we've seen these cliches in movies since then. Especially the horror thriller aspect of these. But mm -hmm. it's like, you gotta remember that this was in the late 80s. Um, and this is a story from the 60s, so a lot of these cliches were being established during that time frame. So, you know, everything's an offshoot of an offshoot of an offshoot type thing. 
But like honestly, I wouldn't say I was surprised by any of the reveals. But then again, you know, the reveal isn't the big thing. You, I think, pretty much from thirty seconds after Billy Zane's character was introduced, you're like, yeah, he's the bad guy. Yeah. Was there one scene in particular that did catch you off guard, Josh? The one scene that threw me off, caught me off guard? Oh, they're going to show this. Boo. No. Boo. Okay, shut it off. Boo. Turn on something happy. No. Whiskers <laughs> on kitten. Do, 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 do. Not the cute kid. Stop showing the cute kid. Oh, what? God. Oh, oh, shit. shit. What the shit? Whoa, subtle. Yeah, that just, he went flying. I didn't know they were going to show the kid flying out of the windshield like a lawn dart. Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, when their baby boy went sailing through <laughs> the window. Yeah, yeah, he didn't go sailing with them. He's, 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 he didn't go on the boat. <laughs> that was a very, the first, was that we pointed out, seven and a half in, minutes into the movie, we were incredibly depressed. <laughs> In terms of establishing shots, holy shit. <laughs> I always thought that scene was gratuitous. Almost, Honestly, like, that You didn't need to say anything. You didn't need that. You just knew that the sun died. Maybe the establishing shot that the sun was, in fact, two or three. And maybe mm -hmm. got out of his car seat. You didn't need to show him flying through the fucking windshield. Seriously. But you know, I was thinking about terms of cinematography and shots like Dan mentioned through the movie, and I apologize if I'm stepping all over your closing thoughts here, that it's like he never lingers on a scene too long, the director. Mm -hmm. But also, I think to a point, that was a detriment because there was a lot of scenes where I just didn't feel any, what did you mention, claustrophobia or like when he was stuck underwater, that scene passed way too fast for me to really mm -hmm. feel, oh, what's the term I'm looking for there, Tom? Tension? Tension. 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 Thank you. Tension. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, to feel any tension for it. Because it was like, oh my god, he's stuck underwater. Oh, he found a pipe. We're good. Oh my god, he's swimming underneath the boat. Oh, he's out. We're good. It's like, oh, oh my god, he got locked into the door. Oh, okay, we're done. It almost felt like he was fleshing certain cuts of film out and just testing different stuff. I don't know. I, I didn't hate it. I definitely think it deserves the 7 out of 10. All right, Tom, what say you? Uh, well, I'm going to build a little bit on Josh's, um, and then I'm going to lead into it, because I think they tend, they're kind of interconnected. Yeah, I did not feel any real sense of suspense until, like, the very end um, with um, Billy Zane on the boat. That that actually felt tense. That was directed well. And I have to agree with you, Josh. It's got, there were some not good directing choices they were competent don't get me wrong but everything on the boat was too spacious to feel claustrophobic and everything in the ocean was too safe to feel like they were stranded didn't do it for me dog i didn't and maybe it's uh, some plays into that the acting wasn't enough or too much. Maybe I mean, these are younger Sam Neill and Nicole Kidman and Billy Zane. They're not really, they were good, but wasn't, you needed extra. You needed some like screaming and wildness. Billy Zane was too attractive. I think, they, actually, I'm just going to say it outright, all three of them were miscast. This film was for as yeah, talented as all three they were. They were miscast. I mean, literally, Sam Neill is like 22 years older than his on-screen wife. Like, I, I even mentioned that, and I apologize if I'm stepping on your closing thoughts. But, no, yeah, both, I felt like there was both, no both chemistry. Of already, both of you have already stepped on my closing thoughts. So, <laughs> Sorry, no, I think I'm just going to shut up when it's my turn. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> Ditto. Okay, well, I'm going to, I won't go too far into that, but I thought the beginning and the ends were gr 80s gratuitous. You did not need to show the baby being ejected like you did, and you did not need Billy Zane to be jawsed like he did. That was for as slow and mid, not even middling, as methodical. I can't even say it's methodical. It just coasted. This film coasted. <laughs> God damn it. This was a coasting film. Yeah, uh, honestly, there was, it was coasting on dead calm waters. Yeah, this film exemplified its own title. It did so much, but not in a boring way, but not in a... I, Exciting, uh, yeah. Yeah. 
but those endings were just out of place. They were absolutely tacked on because someone in the studio said, this film's boring. We need something exciting to draw you in. We need a better ending. God, I'm pissed. Now I'm pissed off at this film. I'm pissed off at it for being so goddamn mediocre. I'm offended by this film, guys. I had a better time with Aquaman. Holy <laughs> shit, we've hated that. Oh my well, god. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I think hate's a strong word. He didn't like it. <laughs> he didn't hate it. Considering the first thought of his final thoughts was, yeah, it sucked. I kind of expected that. <laughs> I, I'll be honest, I expected a lot more vitriol from Tom at the end of Aquaman. And honestly, his his your analysis, Tom, of Aquaman was basically I didn't hate this movie, but I definitely don't like it, and I'm not gonna watch it again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This one is just so offensively average. I'm losing my thoughts here. This is it's the A-plus student. That kid that you're excited to have. Like, oh, this kid. Oh, my God. Look at these grades. Look at look at this family. This is going to be great. And they just meh their way. He's the ringer on the group project who you think is going to do all the work but ends up doing none of the work. I, I, that's, a, that's, be, that's as good as I can get it, guys. I hate this film. Uh, I hate it not because it's bad, but because it could have been so much better and it didn't. Nigel, your thoughts, because I'm going to yell on mute. Uh, hmm. Okay, I'm I'm gonna build on the things you guys said. Yeah, he didn't he didn't do the bad director stuff where he let a scene linger for too long or awkwardly, but at the same time there was very little tension built in this movie. And one of the biggest jarring scenes is actually in the last couple of minutes after they recover Sam Neill's character and they recover the raft and he's not on it. And so you're meant to believe that after this harrowing experience, they just go back to having their vacation. Like they went back to, she went back to swimming in the ocean. He's washing her hair. She, he's talking about this lovely bath. He's going to make her and breakfast. And she, you know, they go back to having their great time before Billy. It's like, almost like, well, 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 there was a madman on the ship and my wife had to sleep with him in order to survive. And I almost drowned on a, on a pirate ship. And, um, I opened up a door and got hit in the face with a torso um, but, uh, other than that, uh, what do you want for dinner, hun? Like, uh, yeah. that, that was a little jarring. It was just a little, like, I, I, if they had flashed forward to a week had gone by since that happened, or if they'd have, they'd have done something on screen, like you go on screen that establishes the passage of time, like one week later or whatever, then I would have been okay with it. But the fact that it, they made it seem like that was within a day of finding Sam Neill and they went right back to their vacation. That was a little like jarring. It took me out of the story a little bit because you guys just went through a really harrowing experience. And on top of the trauma at the beginning of the movie of losing your son, which the trip was supposed to be about healing from that grief. So on top of all of this trauma, and then after they get rid of Billy Zane's character, so to speak, get rid of him, they go back to their vacation. Like I said, it's just, it's so weird watching him wash her hair and talking about having croissants and a, a bath. And they're talking about, you know, what they're going to have for dinner and, and making love until the sun comes up and all this stuff. And like, guys, guys, this feels like it was just yesterday that you guys just had a madman on your ship. Yeah. And now, now you're back to having your vacation. So that I didn't like. That notched the movie down a little bit for me. And I'd have to say, Tom, when you said everyone was miscast, I'd have to say the one big one that was miscast for me was Sam Neill. And that's not because he's not a good actor. He's a fantastic actor. But we think of Sam Neill's best roles. And I, I would say his best three roles are in The Hunt for Red October, Jurassic Park, and Event Horizon. And in all three of those movies, Sam Neill has – people to play off of that show how great of an actor he is in hunt for red october he plays very well off of sean connery's character in jurassic park uh watching childless alan grant become the protector of those kids throughout yeah. the movie that's awesome and the way he plays off those kids is fantastic also the way that he's supposed to be a paleontologist and he's seeing dinosaurs for the first time in his life oh, yeah. like, like that's amazing and then in event horizon you know how he descends into madness as the movie continues to go on the way he plays off of Lawrence Fishburne's character and the way he psychs into his own mind. I never got that in this movie. Like he, he spends most of the movie by himself and he just doesn't, I think Sam Neill's one of those actors that just seems to benefit better when someone, he has someone to play off of because I just didn't feel any tension when he was on 
that boat. Yeah, he, and also, they, that could be the direction of the film, too. I mean, we didn't get a chance to build any tension when he was trapped under underwater. You didn't get any, any chance to see his character development because it's like they had a three second limit or five second limit on a scene. That's all you got. You better get all the exposition in that scene you got. Otherwise, we're cutting, yeah. Cut, cutting yeah. to the next scene. Yeah, no range in his acting, and some of his acting choices were bizarre. Do you agree with me? Especially, like, when he was coming off the train and the cops were approaching him. It seemed like, and disagree with me or not, his expressions and the way that was shot seemed like he was someone suspicious, not someone who's, like, worried or concerned or anything. Like, that, that whole everything was just weird did you get that too nigel i i did it kind of felt like um they were setting this movie up to be a uh, a little more of a mystery <clears throat> than it really was although it, it was advertised as a thriller so i guess that fits but yeah you're right some of the like i think josh pointed that out right at the beginning of the movie when he's in the back seat of the cruiser and the the way the lighting is on his face like the light it's it's, it's blocking like a, a third or a half of his face so that he's um he's kind of in shadow kind of imply that he's someone either suspicious or shady or not on the up and up but then you find out in the movie as the movie goes on he's he's a loving devoted husband he's not anything more than that yeah i thought that was a strange directing choice and i don't know it's just like i said sam neill's a great actor i love sam neill i think he's a good actor he just didn't have anything to do in this movie other than tread water literally yeah. <laughs> and uh this was like a bottle episode i don't know Can we just... cast away the puns <laughs> <laughs> so i didn't mean to take the wind out of your sails Nigel. no no no. i'm just saying that he um he just didn't have much to do in this movie except literally tread water i think his talents as an actor were wasted in this role this isn't to take away from sam neill he's just he had nothing to do in this movie yeah. at least no, nothing that could show his acting chops at least not in that kind of role i think he's he just he, he needs to have people to play off of i think he maybe had 10 lines of dialogue the whole film yeah. you know held the, the scene where he's washing her hair and talking to her about breakfast and stuff that's like the most he talked in the whole movie he spent probably a, like a good three minutes on screen pumping water uh, you know i gotta say um unless you had any other final thoughts there dan uh no the only other thought i had was um like i said the 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 mood swing towards the end of the movie just kind of really just the fact that if they do nothing to show on screen that more than a few hours has passed since oh yeah billy zane got jettisoned off the ship and he got rescued and within the ne the very next scene is her back to swimming in the ocean and him being mr loving caring husband and i'm like this was trauma, guys. I mean, I know some people can bury their feelings, but my God. You know, I think that's like a thing with the entire movie, too. Like, you mentioning that kind of makes me think there's really no sense for time at all in this film. Like, the one scene where he burns the ship, mm -hmm. and he's, like, up, and he's standing, and he's watching the boat sink, and she sees it on the horizon, and she's sailing towards it. And then cut next scene, he's passed out on the raft. Mm -hmm. Like, what's your sense for time there? I mean, the way they portrayed it was 10 minutes. Yeah, it might have well, been the same day for all we know. Yeah, they were on the horizon. It couldn't have been more than an hour or two. So what did he do? He burned it into the ground and just say, all right, well, time to turn in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, and I feel like, you know, he fires the flare and Billy Go or Billy Zane swallows it. <laughs> he, you know, he, he, die, he dies. He, he was chomping at the bit. But... <sighs> He just wanted a light Josh, snack. If you, don't, if you don't stop, Josh, I'm going to mute your microphone. I'm not even going <laughs> to mute No, he kills Billy Zane's character. He falls off the boat, and then the camera just cuts, and it just goes to the credits. So well, You know what the next line was, right? They're sitting there looking at his burning corpse, and she leaned over and was like, so what do you want for lunch? Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> like she, I, I have a feeling that she would have turned around and said, told him, she goes, I heard something crashing. That wasn't my breakfast, was it? <laughs> I mean, I, I have a feeling that they went right back to their day as normal, as you know, as his his, okay. his ghost writer head is <laughs> floating around in the damn ocean. There's a lot of floods. I would definitely say that this is the sink part of the sink or swim tour. So far, yeah, this yeah. was on the level of Pathfinder, though. Is it? I was. It, it was. It, I don't think it was as bad as Pathfinder. I was paying attention to the movie. It's only really, like, as immediately after watching the movie, like, even, okay, let me rephrase. I told you, Tom, that I didn't hate the movie. I still don't hate yeah. the movie. But it's not a movie that I'm going to go watch again. Like, Pathfinder, I guarantee you, I'm never going to watch that again. But I will willingly avoid that movie. But this one's just like, yeah, I watched that. It wasn't terrible. 
But I mean, it's flawed. I still say, I still argue, act like I've seen this movie 20 years ago. Yeah, the two main characters had no chemistry. You're right. You're, no. You are so right on that. Not for lack of acting. I think they're both fantastic actors. But they have hardly any scenes together where yeah. they feel like they have, and they have, they don't have a chance in the movie to develop any chemistry. Mm -hmm. And again, going back to no range. Who? And by the way, it, and did you guys ever get the feeling that Nicole Kidman's character was in any immediate danger like at any minute something bad could happen to her no. if she hadn't just kept trying to stop him it's not like he was unhinging and going to kill her at any minute you almost needed like God, this would have been a good like think about it it's sort of been a good batman movie like batgirl stuck on the boat with the joker and batman stuck on a different boat yeah Ooh. that would have been significantly better especially the heath ledger joker that would have made you feel like she's in danger at any given time Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just they they tried that in the movie. They definitely tried to establish that. Oh, yeah, she's in danger and she's doing all these things to survive. Like she, you know, sleeping with him. But then, like she keeps for every one step forward, she takes two steps back. Like she puts all those sedatives in his drink and then tries to shoot him while he's still not passed out. Why like taking can't a boat or taking a Viagra and then jerking off immediately after? Yeah, it's like, sweetie, you need to wait for a moment. <laughs> Like I said, it just the scenes of this movie were jarring. Josh, I agree with you. It's it's a seven out of ten. Actually, I would say it's a six out of ten. Actually, I agree with Tom. It's a it's a five out of ten. It's just average. Yeah, it's, it's I would agree. I don't. I think a seven out of ten is. It's an acceptably average film. Yeah. And you know what? I kind of understand why it was only out for three or four weeks in 1989. Because looking at the other movies that came out in 1989, this movie got buried. <laughs> You know, even the boring movies on this list in 1989 are better than this. Uh, also, it, all the big hits, all the big hits in 1989, all these other movies wore it at least two views, at least two two times seeing it to catch other stuff. Batman, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, Rain Man, Ghostbusters 2, Back to the Future 2, these, Dead Poets Society. All of these movies uh, I've seen at least two or three times, if not more. In the case of like Batman and Last Crusade and Lethal Weapon 2, I've seen them more times than I could probably count. Mm -hmm. But those movies, like, I can see why this movie just got absolutely buried because it's a movie that once you see once, you don't... You never really, need to see it again. You never need to see it again. And I definitely wouldn't have paid a movie ticket price for it. Mm -mm. It's definitely like a movie that you find at the Blockbuster or the or the video store at the time. And you just take it home and you watch it once and then you return it and then you never think about it again. Yeah. Honestly, in my opinion, and guys agree, disagree, this should have just been a half hour, 45 minute long thing. It should have been like a TV episode of a yeah, TV th show. Exactly. Yeah, it's a bottle episode. Mm -hmm. It's literally all it should be. This, this is one of those things where back in the 60s, it might have been a good book. In the... 70s, it might have been a good movie, but by the 80s, it should just have been an episode on a shit. It would have been a good episode of Star Trek and uh, Next Gen. Dan, yeah. Was there an episode of Star Trek that was like this? <laughs> There's been episodes of television shows that have definitely been inspired by this particular type of story where the uh, more competent fellow gets separated from the vulnerable wife or other person and they're locked inside of a room or a or building or some kind of a setting with someone who's a little off his rocker. Um, well, the movie is definitely a trope. Definitely uh, doesn't warrant a full movie. Yeah. No. Like I said, it's, it's a movie that you see once and I'll probably never see this movie again. I have no interest in really watching it again. I didn't really see anything that made me think, Oh, I need to check that out again and see what I missed. Yeah. Average film. Yeah. Uh, so far out of the uh, sink or swim summer tour. This is my, been my least favorite so far. Mm-hmm. Same. Uh, infuriatingly average is how I use face punchingly average. God damn, I pissed at this film. Better or uh, wor better or worse than Pathfinder. This oh, movie was Ben the Dog of the Sink or Swim Summer Tour. Yeah, it's better than Pathfinder because at the end of it, as much as I hate this and everyone thinks it's average, we're at least talking about it. We paid attention to it. Pathfinder's still the bar on the ground. Uh, it's easy to get over this film. Just Thankfully, though, we're floating into a better film. Isn't that right, guys? We are. We are. We are. No, no, we're not floating anywhere. We're going for a hunt. Ooh, we are, aren't we? Yes. Yeah, we're, we're, we're about to uh, call the dogs to action, and we're going to go for a hunt next week. Yeah. Right, so what, what are we going to hunt next week? 
Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to on a hunt for a submarine. We are taking the great Sam Neill. Like I said, no disrespect. He wasn't great in this movie, but he is great in the next movie coming up because he wants to see Montana. And we are going to watch The Hunt for Red October, one of the best <laughs> movies ever, one of the best spy films ever, a Tom Clancy classic. Really looking forward to it. One of my favorite movies of all time. So, uh, it's, it, in fact, I'm, I'm almost as giddy about this one as I was when we went when we went to watch Top Gun together because top it's it's right up there with me. Like Hunt for Red October is in that echelon of movies where like I watch a hundred times, love every time I watch it. So, but we are watching the Hunt for Red October, and that's what we're doing next week. So, before we give our sign offs for tonight, I'd like to give a special shout out to our special friend of the channel, Peggy. She had an operation today. And uh, we know she's going to be listening to this while she heals up. So we just want to let her know that uh, we're thinking about her and we'd like to see her get well soon. Peggy, we're, we're with you there. Well, not with you, with you, but we're thinking of you. Thanks for you. You've been awesome to us. We appreciate you more than words can say and good luck out there. Yes. Um, so yeah, good time. So thank you for listening. We definitely appreciate it. And we hope we are entertaining. So yeah, you're a wonder. Well. You're, you're a wonderful friend of the channel. So we're looking forward to hearing from you again soon. And with that... Well, uh, first off, I'd like to give a special shout-out to uh, Sync Lounge and Plex for hosting our activities for the evening. Without them, we would not be able to be our quarantined selves and uh, watch this movie in sync, not the <laughs> band. Sync Lounge is a plug-in for Plex. It allows us to all watch the movie at the same timestamp, so we can watch it and talk, discuss the movie as we're watching it, so... They've been hosting us every week, and it's a free service that's attached to Plex, which is also free. So shout and, out to them. And, of course, in terms of hosting, you can find us on firepit.podbean.com. Podbean, great podcasting hosting site, home to such ones as Critical Role as others. Uh, again, we're happy to be part of that and lucky to be part of that. You can find us there. You can find us on Spotify, iTunes, and Amazon right now, Josh? Yep, the uh, TuneIn uh, plug-in or whatever it is for the Amazon Echo. So find us wherever, maybe possibly some more stuff in the future. We are still playing that by ear. We're still feeling the waters, if you will. Uh, but as Blame. always... <laughs> <laughs> but this has been the fire pit we thank you for listening i've been tom i've been dan and i've been josh thank and you for listening fire this has been a production of uh curtain call entertainment llc beat you tom you beat me to it darn it <laughs> <laughs> thanks for listening everyone and good luck out there <laughs>just realized something sam neil wanted to see montana in the hunt for red october in jurassic park he's from montana he's, he's in montana at the beginning of the movie i was today years old when i realized that connected <laughs> universe it all comes together because he was in the navy right yeah so that's how he gets into the navy this epic trauma like they say a couple never stays together after they lose a child so he got a divorce. Says, "Fuck it, I'm going to join the. Uh, I'm going back on the submarine." I'm pretty and sure then he, he goes defects to the Soviet Union. <laughs> something. It's not America, so I don't care. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's us versus them. That's how it works, right? Right. <laughs> but and, and then then he you know comes to the United States and uh, becomes a paleontologist and then goes back to uh, island off the coast of Costa Rica. I feel like Charlie Day with the, the conspiracy theory wall right now. And this is our Pepe Sylvia. We've, we've cracked this riddle, guys. Yeah. Yes, we have. This is amazing. I'm going to write a paper on it. <laughs>